Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and this is the part 8 of the Platform Beginner series. In this episode, you are going to be adding sound effects to the game. And we will be using this asset pack here from Void One Gaming, and this is a free asset pack with a bunch of different sound effects, and I have used it in the past, and it's really good. The link for this will be in the description, so you can download it. Alright, let's get started. First thing, let's import the sound effects that we want to our game. And you can go inside the asset pack and search for the sound effects that you like. I have already selected here five sound effects that we are going to be using for this episode. This one, the collectibles 8, will be used when we pick up the gold coin. The jump 3 will be used when you jump, the power upper 4 will be used when you pick up a sword, the steps 1 will be used when we walk, and the steps 2 will be used when we land. Let's click on the asset folder, select all of them, drag and drop, and it should import everything. Let's start with the easiest sound, there is a jump. Inside the jump, let's add an audio stream player. Be careful here, we have audio stream player 2D, audio stream player 3D, and the audio stream player. The difference here is that the audio stream player is non-positionally, the stream player 2D plays the sound in a positional way, and it requires an audio listener, so it can know which position the audio should be played. This is useful when you are making a game, for example, and you want the player to hear where the sounds come from. Let's say you have something to the right of the screen and you want the player to know that that sound effect, maybe a monster or something, is coming out of the right. That's not the case for this project. We are just going to be using audio stream player for all the sound effects and including the music. However, this asset pack does not contain music. So I will be not putting music here but with the knowledge of this episode, you should be able to put music into the game without any problems. So let's go ahead and create the audio stream player. And let's rename this to jump sound effect. And right here, we need to put a stream that is the sound that we just imported. And for the jump is the jump creep. And if you click here, it will expand, and then we can hit play. Uh, this sound effect is really loud. I already used it in another project, so I know how loud this is. Before we play this, let's adjust the volume of this, all right? We can adjust the volume right here for this specific stream player, but we can assign it to a bus, and then we can lower the volume of the bus. And right here, we only have master, and to create a new sound bus, we need to go here, on the bottom side of the editor, where it says audio. And this should bring up the audio bus layout. And right now, we only have master. The way that the audio bus works, let's add one here. Let's rename this to sound effects. And you can see here, down here, that it has the master selected. What it means is that this bus will go to the master, and then the master will go to the speakers. So, for example, if the speakers are at 50% volume, when we play a sound effect here, it will go to the master, and then it will be reduced by the speaker. And if the speakers are at 100%, but the master is like this, the sound effect will come out the master and will be reduced before going to the speakers. The same can be said to effects. We can add effects to each bus. And if I add an effect here and one in the master, all the sounds that come through this bus will receive the effects that this bus has. And then when it goes to the master, we receive the, the effects that the master has. And then we'll go out the speaker. Let's reset the volume for the master. 
and we can see that right after we start making change in here it saved for us the default bus layout this is used by Koto by default and we can create different layouts and we can use the audio server to swap this via script in runtime for this project this is not much of a use so we are not be doing this but just know that this is an option for the sound effects i will lower this volume to about minus 19 db and right here i will assign the sound effect if we were to add music here, I would add a new bus here. And I would position it right here. And I would put this like music. And then in the menu, we could enable the player to mute the music or to mute the sound effects or mute the whole thing by muting the master. This tool is very powerful for small projects. And I really don't think that if you don't have a professional sound designer working with you, I don't think that you will need more than what this offers you. I will leave the music here, even though I don't have any music, but you can see that from the sound effect, we can chain into the music and then into the master and then out of the speakers, but everything will be linked to the master. And now that we have the sound effect here, let's play it every time that we jump. And to do this, super simple in the enter we just need to call this and if you go to the documentation right here you can see that we have some easy methods right here for example play and stop that's basically all that you need so we are going to call the play every time that we enter the jump we can do this by signing on ready bar of sound effect and you can assign this right here. And every time that we enter jump, we're gonna say sound effect dot play. And if you go ahead now into the game, every time that we jump, it plays the sound. Let's go ahead and add the sound for the gold coins. As we save the gold coins as a scene, we can click on this icon to open the scene for editing. And we're going to do the same thing we did for the jump. Right here, we're going to add an audio stream player. We're going to drag and drop the sound that we want for this. We're going to assign the bus sound effect. And right here, also, I forgot to mention, there's a side note here. If you want a sound to loop, like a, like a background music or something, we need to select the file, go into the import, and then under loop mode, we should say how it should loop. For example, let me change the collectibles 8 that we just assigned so you can see. If you say forward, and re-import you can see that we have the loop right here and this means that the loop begins at zero and it repeats right here that's not what we want for this one so let's re-import the default and now let's add a sound effect here let's rename this to collect sound effect and if you check here the duration of the sound is 0 0.14 and this animation for the collection of the coin is actually four frames at 10 frames per second it means that it's 0 0.4 seconds so in theory the collection should the animation should finish after the sound effect which means that right here when we play the animation, we can also play the sound effect. And when the animation finishes, we're going to kill free the whole thing. 
We can create an unready var for this, since this is a one-time action and after this execution the node will be removed from the scene. I don't see any problem just doing this and using the direct reference to the node that we want. And we're gonna do this, dot play. And when we head back to the game now, we have the sound effect to pick up the coins. Let's send the sound effect to the sword. It should be straightforward. We're going to add an audio stream player. We're going to assign the sound right here. We're going to change the bus to sound effect. And we're going to say pick up sound effect. Right now, what we need to do here, after we set this, we need to hide the sword. Let's set the animated sprite to be visible to the false. So we hide the sprite. Let's call the play of the sound effect. And let's move the skill free to whenever we finish playing the sound effect. Go into the node. We have the signal finish that is emitted when the audio stops playing. Let's double click it. Let's connect the sword. Don't pick up sound effect finish. And right here we can kill free. Another thing that I want to do here is to disable the collision shape. So we don't end up allowing the player to go out of the collision shape and go back in and pick up in the sword twice and play in the sound effect twice. To do this, we need to set this property as true. And you can see here that we need to call this by set the third. So we're going to do this, this reference, and you can say set the third. And the property name is disabled. And we're going to set it to true. And this will disable the collision shape. Let's go ahead now and click on play. And when we pick up the sword, we have this nice sound effect. All right, the game feels so much more alive now. Let's keep the improvements and let's set the landing sound effect right here for the fall. Let's set a child node, audio stream player. We're going to rename this to landing sound effect. And this is the steps two. The buzz will be sound effect. And when we open the script, we want to play this when we hit the floor and we are not going to jump. So basically inside of these two conditions right here, let's make a small adjustment here so we don't have to duplicate code. First, let's get a reference to the already bar here for the sound effect. And let's change the C here and let's say else. Change the state to idle. If input x equals zero, else we run. Then we can remove all of this. And right here we can say sound effect play. Just make sure you have the right buzz assigned. And yes, as you can see, we already landed, so... There's just the footsteps to add. Let's go to the run. Let's add another stream player. Let's rename this footsteps. Sound effect. Let's assign the steps one to it. 
Let's change the bus. Sound effects. Let's go into the run. For the run, there are several ways we can go about this. We can connect to the animated sprite 2D, the frame change it and play it every frame, or we can implement some sort of counter to play every three frames or every two frames, or we can just add a timer and every time that this timer times out, we play the sound effect. If you were using the animation player, you can add to the animation player a callback to the player or to the run in the animation. And you can select specific frames to do this callback and this callback can trigger the sound effect. That's not what we are using here, so I'm not going to be showing you this. But just know that if you are using this, this is an option. Let's add here a timer as well. Let's rename this to footsteps timer. And here on the run, we're going to grab a reference for both of these. We're going to sound effect. Let's get one. Put sound effects timer and you put the timer right here let's go ahead and connect here timer the timeout in the run right here on put sets timer timeout and right here we're gonna call the sound effects of play Let's set up the timer, actually. Let's set the wait time to 0.3. The process callback will be idle because we don't need this to be in the physics. This will loop, but we don't need to check the one shot and we don't want to check the auto start as well. So this is done. Now, all that we need to do here is whenever we enter, we want to play, we want to call the timer and we want to start the timer. We also want to play the sound effect on enter so we don't actually wait 0.3 seconds to play the first footstep sound. And then whenever we leave this state, we're going to stop the timer. And that should be all for the footsteps. We have a nice footsteps. Alright, that's really it for this video. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys on the next one. Bye!